for being here. Um, this one logistical thing really fast. As you can see, it's pretty crowded in here. We want to ask, since this event is for the UOP campus, that the students are the ones that have a seat first. Um, so if you're not a student and you're willing to give up your seat for them, that would be amazing. Thank you.
And if you are a student and you're not sitting, go ahead and take a seat because these nice people are standing up for you. Okay, just go ahead and sit down. <laughs> Thank you for being willing. <laughs> Thank you for being willing to stand. Look at that. You get, you get, you get Christian points and you didn't have to stand. For the record, you would have done. But again, let's try to push to the middle so we can fill them all up. We're going to go ahead and get started. So good evening. Welcome to Janet Lay Theater. Um, my name is Alana Ferguson. I'm the staff worker for InterVarsity here on campus. We're also known as Pacific Christian Fellowship. Um, on behalf of our chapter at the Well Ministries and Quail Lakes Baptist Church, we'd like to thank you for being here tonight. Tonight we're going to hear from Dr. Frank Turk on the topic of his book, I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Dr. Turk is an award-winning author dynamic speaker, and president of crossexamine.org. It's a nonprofit ministry aimed at providing evidence for Christianity and tackling questions such as, does truth exist? Does God exist? And are miracles possible? He received his master's degree from George Washington University and his doctorate from Southern Evangelical Seminary. Dr. Turk will first give his presentation and then at the end there'll be time for Q&A. Um, at this time, please help me welcome Dr. Turk. Thanks a lot. Good evening, Tigers. Do we have some Tigers here? I want to go back all the way to September 29th, 2006. That's when Petty Officer Michael Monsor is a United States Navy SEAL. He's operating in Ramadi, Iraq. He's standing on a roof in Ramadi, and he's standing in front of a doorway to this roof. Lying on the roof next to him are two Navy SEAL colleagues in the sniper-prone position. They've already taken AK-47 fire and a rocket-propelled grenade, but they're not exactly sure where the enemy is. There's a bit of a lull in the fighting. Insurgents have blocked off the streets in Ramadi, and there's someone on the loudspeaker in the town mosque yelling, kill the Americans. As Mansour and his team are looking for the next attack, an insurgent from an unknown location throws a grenade up on the roof. It hits Mansour in the chest, and it falls to his feet. Due to the length of the throw, there's no opportunity to pick up the grenade and throw it back. Monsor only has a split second to make a decision. He can save himself if he leaps through the doorway behind him, but if he does, his two Navy SEAL colleagues lying on the roof will surely die. Monsor yells, grenade! But instead of jumping backward to save himself, he jumps forward, chest first, onto the grenade. It detonates. 30 minutes later, 25-year-old Michael Monsor is dead. His two Navy SEAL colleagues lying on the roof receive only minor injuries because Monsor's body muffled the blast. One of those survivors said at Monsor's funeral, Mikey looked death in the face that day and said, you will not take my friends, I will go in their stead. I've never seen a United States president cry until April of 2008. That's when President George W. Bush called Monsor's parents into the East Room to give them their son's Medal of Honor posthumously. The president couldn't even get through the citation without breaking down. 
Since then, Monsors High School in Garden Grove, California, built a new stadium. They named it Michael A. Monsor Memorial Stadium. The golden trident that the seals wear dominates the 50-yard line. Earlier this year, January 2019, in San Diego, actually North Island, just out of San, outside of San Diego, the United States Navy commissioned the USS Michael Monsor, the newest 